Hello everyone, welcome back to the action. And what a match we've got up next. Shane Thompson came into last season ranked number one. Struggled a little bit at the beginning to justify that number one seeding, but then imperious performance last time out on the Pro Series, winning the final event of the season. Up against a man slightly closer to the other end of the rankings, Brian Halcrow coming in ranked 35, although he's had some good moments this season. Seems pretty confident as he comes into this. Delighted to be joined by Dylan Leary, and thank you for your time before. I know you're, you're next on after this, so good to get your thoughts ahead of your match. Yeah, no problem. Got to help out, that's good. So nice break there by Shane. Um, yeah, should uh, dispatch these fairly comfortably. A little bit of work down the bottom. Hmm. Yeah, it's just uh, that one middle of the table has gone a little bit too far there. So unless he opts for that one into the corner and run, run it round, drop into the gap by the black, possibly. He's played that well. Oh, that's a great touch. Yeah, that's an exquisite that's positional touch. shot. You yeah. can see there was very little space. He almost had to hit the yellow as he went past, just picked out the gap. Stunned into yellow, just pump out of the way. Oh, do more than that. <coughs> Again, just a nice little touch through the gap with the yellow and black. Yeah, Shane's been playing well lately, obviously winning the last tournament, but so has Brian. Brian's been doing all right of late. Yeah, I think Brian does relish these opportunities. Now the golden breaks in play, but oh, he's got it moving. Fairly good. It's got a nice, easy yellow start, a uh, red first. Yeah, I think they link up quite nicely. Slightly unconventional break. You don't see many people standing up at the beginning of the shot, even <laughs> if they are by the end. Trying to get as much power as he could into it. Yeah, so well, he's definitely taking red sits. I think the red in the middle of the table will be his last ball. For the black, it's just going to tidy up around the bottom here. By in the qualifying round, did Brian to get through to this, so effectively straight through to this TV stages. Although that same qualifying weekend, he was here at the venue, a three hour long match against Chris Day to get through in the Champions League qualifiers. Oh, I thought that was. Um for this one, yeah, that's right. It was good, great result against Chris. Chris, another, you know, top player. So to beat him, um, very good. Yeah, world championship finalist, of course, Chris Day, a few months back. So Brian obviously played well in that match. That's a nice little shot. Okay, should be okay now. Just got to get his white out, sort of centre of the table. Yeah, perfect. Oh, he's <coughs> oh, I thought he was going to go the other side, middle. So he's got a bit of work to do with the cue ball here. Yeah. Because where if he's gone the other side, he's just he can just drop it off one or two cushions for the last red. This one he's going to have to sort of be out of position, and screw it across, and just hope he doesn't overhit it. Yeah, it's just off straight the wrong way, so that's a yeah. really easy shot. So this is where all the side and screw comes up. He always bounces it around. Yeah, that's a lovely shot. He needs to keep rolling though. Should be okay. Yeah, I mean, that's good experience of the conditions. There aren't many tables that you could force that angle from the position he was in. No, definitely not. So you just drop it in dead weight. I think it's deceiving on this uh, camera angle. It looked like it was um, sort of virtually just off full ball. Well, so, breaking dish, breaking yeah, dish. Unconventional moments in it, but as long as this eight ball goes down, he'll be very happy with that start. Yeah, he's got a lovely um, strike of a ball. Yeah, he gets it straight through the middle. And the ball's gone st straight in. Did the ball go down? Is it? Yeah, the yellow. Yeah, I think it went straight in, didn't it? 
The corner one. Yeah. No. Oh dear. Yeah. One, one is well, up in the middle. Turn my eyes are everywhere. On. Yeah. I thought it must have went straight down. Okay. The reds are okay. The black is a, a bit of a mare. Yeah. No. Easy ball to go into it. Maybe the one on the black spot. He's gone yellows anyway. Yeah, you can bump it out first ball. Oh, lovely shot. Yeah, that's perfect. The fact he had that angle, if he didn't, going yellows was going to be quite challenging. I think he's knocked it into a plant as well to the bottom left, so no problem with that one. Yeah, that really helps. <coughs> Oh. Very effortless technique around the table. Makes the game look so easy. He certainly does. One of the best cueists in the game. Yeah, derived a lot of confidence from that last Pro Series win. Not that he'd by any means had a bad season up until that point, but when you come in ranked number one, it's just so hard to defend. He had a semi final and a quarter final earlier on in the year, but really propelled him up the rankings. So it's going to be seeded five for the 2023 season. So he's going to take the two balls down the bottom, I think. Yeah, and just drift past the black. Yeah, the fact that the eight balls on the side cushion is means it take this one down to the bottom left, as you say, and then leave the ball up to the top left as straight as possible. Just have the eight yeah. ball waiting for him. Yeah, that's perfect. <coughs> Don't need to get too greedy as well on this table. They're reasonably accepting down the rail, so it's not imperative to be right tight in behind the eight ball. Yeah, just sort of drag this in. Yeah, just... Pocket weight, it's fine. So, three on the trot. See how long they can keep going. Mark, if your confidence in Shane Thompson, it's a good ball on the rail, but yeah, I agree with you. It's yeah, yeah, I don't think unmissable it's unmissable. Oh my, I think for his stand. Oh, I did. Commentator's curse. Yeah, I didn't that see that. Surprise, miss. I think the fact it was dead straight actually wasn't that helpful. If he'd have had a bit of angle, it would almost have made that shot easier. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it does tend to be easier when you can sort of see an angle. So it makes it possible to, he came just inside and pushed it away from the cushion, whereas if he'd had more angle, he'd have been kind of pushing it into the jaw. Well, this is a real Rook. collector's item, that kind of miss from Shane Thompson. And Brian has got to make hay now from that. Yeah, he must take his chance, because he's not going to get many like this. Let's just put on his first ball and then everything should just link up nicely. Drop this in for the middle. Yes. Probably take the two on the right hand side, leave the plant. When you suspect in the context of the match that won't ultimately prove decisive, but there's no question that Brian's the underdog here, so letting him get ahead at the beginning is not ideal because he's going to build up confidence. No, you can't afford to give frames away. <coughs> I know it's early in the game, like you say, but. You know, that's how the confidence builds for Brian. So he stays, he doesn't break the dish or golden break next frame and, you know, and Shane gets a bit frustrated in his, in his chair. That's a nice little shot. Yeah, it feels like golden breaks have been the, the talking point so far. I don't know yeah. how much of Sean's match you saw, but I heard all some tips it. there about the yeah. where's the break from. Yeah, he, he's done all right. Was it three, did he get? Yeah, he had two in the first match and one in the last one. Very nice. In fact, his first two breaks of the tournament were both golden breaks, so oh. easy game at that oh, point. I didn't know that. <laughs> what a way to start. He wasn't a mile away with the next one either. <sighs> wow. Blimey. He's got away with it there. <laughs> that would been a shot where he had to play proper position. That would have been a problem. I mean, he didn't really need to sort of get down the table, if you like, because he could have just sort of bounced it off. Easy. Wow. wow. A chance he shouldn't have had and a chance he almost failed to take with miskeying that ball, but... Well, I've never won one and uh, 
I thought, right, I'm going to get Brian. And then Brian's done that to me. It's just... Yeah, because you went second, didn't you? Having had that time <laughs> set for you, that's not, not the easiest position. Uh, it wasn't yeah. actually, as it happens, a consequential six road, was it? It was just no, to determine the, the, the positions, positions in the group. Yeah. Okay, so a yellow's gone down. It's not a very nice leave. I don't think he's got an easy first ball, no. So a bit of work to do. He's got a long red down the rail, not ideal. No, this is the kind of shot that historically he's not been the best at compared with a lot of other top players. Yeah. The thing is, even if he pots that, it's, he's still got so much work to do. He's got to leave. Yeah, it's just it's one of them. Yeah, I mean, there's no such thing as a good miss exactly, but he may not be that sorry that Shane's in first. Yeah. I guess we'll find out the answer in a moment. It's incredible, the, the reaction he gets with shots like that. He had a lot of angle, just hardly seemed to touch it and just gets such good reaction off the cue ball. I think he does a lot of work on his queuing and um, it sort of does pay off, as you see there, where he is getting a lot of reaction after contact. <coughs> He can move the white around sort of effortlessly. So in the middle round the angles. Now it's how he leaves this next shot. So you can bump out oh, another couple of rolls there. He's going to try and leave an angle to try and pump his balls off the rail. The yellow and the red on the rail. Looking at a double. Maybe screw into the other red to see what happens. Oh, he's playing safe. So, yeah. I think in the context of the match, that's probably wise. I mean, it, he's not leaving a lot, and I don't think Brian's the kind of player that's going to be tempted for, to go for anything crazy from here. Well, Brian's a very cagey player himself, so he won't mind him doing this. He's quite happy to have a little battle, and he'll probably tie this other red up and skim off it and leave him down the, in the bulk area. Yeah, this is one area of the game that Brian probably would fancy himself to be as good or better than Shane. I think he'd probably have to admit that in terms of pure potting ability, he's a, he's a little bit behind. But yeah. a tactical battle, as you say, he won't mind. Maybe he didn't fancy the gap between the red and the... OK, well, he's covered the pocket. Um Typically with international rules, covering the pocket's not that useful, mm. but at least there's no balls right next to it, so it's not the worst position, actually. He could play the loss of turn. Well, he can go for the pot, and if he knocks the yellow in, maybe that's what he's looking at. Coming off the middle of the three reds, bumping the yellow in, possibly potting his ball, hopefully getting a bit of action on it. Yeah, well, he's got rid of it. That's, that's even better. He's tied up his own yellow. That's, that's worked out lovely. Yeah, that's kind of the dream result. He was, as you say, playing to, to pot it, knowing that it wasn't terrible if it didn't go in, but that's much better. Yeah. <coughs> if that yellow wasn't on the top rail, that would be a, <coughs> that would be um, that'd be perfect to run it around to try and get on in the middle of the centre of those three reds. So he's he's looking at possibly taking the one off the black spot. Yeah, that yellow on the ball cushion plays quite big if he plays the ball at the top of the table. Unless he drops this red in and plays for the gap between the red and yellow for the one nearer the hole. Yeah, see, that was right on the line that he needed. Yeah, I mean, he must have known he was cannoning it. He can't have thought he was going past it, but I guess just hoping to get a thinner cannon on it. Yeah. I think he was hoping he was going to be wrong. <laughs> yes. Well, yes, yeah, one of those ones you can see the angry, you just don't want to believe it. Yeah. Those. Fine cut. I think he's going for this. He's going to cannon into the other red. Okay, right. So Brian could just tap up to the uh, two yellows and just let one just drift in front of the one nearest to two yellows. Keeps him pretty safe. Always oh, over it that a bit. It's left him a double, possibly. It's going to be a tight double. Yeah, you're trying to get him right in behind. Not sh I'm not sure if that goes, that double goes. <clears throat> no, that yellow is slightly guarding it, and the, the other yellow is guarding the treble, so maybe no aggressive option available. Okay. 
I was checking out my things going for it. Yeah, I think he was going for the treble by the looks of it. Yeah. Yeah, the, the pocket was open enough for the treble. So a chance for Brian to um, nick this frame. Yeah, this is starting to get important because he's had a couple of frames now that he shouldn't have had shots in that he's, he's he tying a chance up. to nick this one. He's tying that red up. I mean, I don't hate that, but he is giving a very good potter another chance at the table. Yeah. I mean, Brian is a we say a proper pool player he's yeah you know he's um he doesn't get entangled in a potting game because it's not his strength so this is this is the right way for him to play against Shane maybe upset his rhythm a, a bit so he's he's got him missing a few shots so he might drift this down the rail and just mess it up a little bit more He's taking a chance if he does. Yeah, so the commentary becomes a little bit more stickier because where well, your players are going for their shots and yeah, he's going to play safety again. Yeah, it's a good weight. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, yeah. what a shot that is. Incredible wow, shot what a position. touch. For somebody who's not played on the table before. Yeah, you're absolutely right, though. You've, you've got to play to your own strengths. There's always a debate about whether you should play your opponent or play the table, but one thing's definitely for sure, you've got to play what suits your game. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Shane would love it if it was an open game, but this I don't think it's going to be that way. Lovely shot. Now he's got... See, now Brian's got two of his reds tied up. He's got total control of this frame now, so it's just as and when he's ready. It was a very good looking shot that way you swerve onto a cushion and the cue ball arcs yeah. back round. Yeah, one for the crowd. So can he get through to that pool over the middle? Is he I think he can just a little Oh no, he's keeping him tied up. See in this situation, yeah, you know, he's leaving him on the cushion, he can't do anything with the white. I mean, if that was off a little bit, he could maybe swing it around the angles and open them up. He could play a, a full ball stun and put his red down. Get his red down by the two reds, so if he does get an opportunity... That's not a bit more. That's, that's fine. Yeah, there's no merit trying to pot that ball and no. near the other ones gives him more chances later on. I mean, even the black's tied up, and he goes in one pocket, I think. An interesting dynamic in the way this is going is that it's eating up a lot of the match clock. So playing race to seven with a 40-minute match clock, almost half of that played, and haven't got through too many frames so far. I mean, on one level, that plays to Brian's strength in the sense that he's the one that's ahead, and slowing it into a tactical game will suit him. The thing that I don't think will suit him so well is when we drop into the last 10 minutes of the match and move to a 15 second shot clock but if you've got a couple of frames uh in front at that stage uh yeah it's just shane's got to make it happen he? okay yeah this is a bit different now because he's red in a much more open position so brian's gonna have to be very careful if he plays any more safeties yeah even if he plays a turnover shot he's going to leave him some kind of long shot. And I think he's gearing up for a, a turnover shot, which I'm mm, not sure that's the thing to do. Unless he can skill it, maybe. Yeah, I mean, but he then he's going to try and pop both of these balls, or he can just try and play red onto yellow and leave the yellow, uh, yellow onto red and leave the yellow over the pocket. Yeah, if he puts the white there, that's, he's, I think he's left him a shot. But he's not going to be on his next ball. Is there a gap for the double? He can maybe come off. Oh, no, is he playing it off the yellow? I think if he plays the double into the middle, I think he's, yeah, he's going to cut it in maybe clip off the red, uh, the yellow. 
No, it's safety. I've never seen so many safety shots. I think he's made that plant. Yeah, this is far and away the longest frame we've seen so far today. Yeah, they, I don't think he's that's that's not worked out for Shane now. I think I think he's got a free go at the plant and just just drift it in with a bit of side to come over for the balls, which is a slight safety shot as well. Yeah, I think you can see from the look on Shane's face, he knows he's got drawn into the kind yeah. of game he didn't really want to play, but oh. quite to figure out how to get out of it. I think that's touching ball. Yeah, it's a big difference if it's touching from a, if it's a millimetre or two away, he makes it well to pot it, but if it's touching, he'll have to play away from it. I'm not sure if it's being called. I don't, I don't think it is a toucher. So if it's not, he can clip us in. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. That was dead weight. Yeah, you wouldn't have believed he could leave it short of the pocket. No. But he nearly did. Well, this okay. has been a strange pattern of match. I mean, this has really all played to Brian's strength so far. It's turned into a kind of scrappy game of the time we don't see very often from Shane. I think in a way he'll, well, not happy to get the frame over if he loses it, but we have to get on with the match because 3-1 isn't too big a lead and there's still plenty of time. What he doesn't want to be doing is allowing too much time to get used up. Even now, Brian not rushing it. What seems a fairly straightforward position, just taking his time to make absolutely sure. Wow, what a strange frame of pool we've seen there. In the end, Brian Halcrow gets it over the line. It's a fascinating match right now because looking at the, the draw this morning and, you know, Brian's a great player, but Shane's been the number one up until, you know, a couple of weeks ago. And you thought, you know, this is one you had him down as a good favourite to win, especially coming in with momentum, having won the last tournament or the last Pro Series tournament, that is, and it hasn't really happened for him in this match, and now all of a sudden he's a man under huge pressure. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't say he's exactly taking it for granted, but when he looks at the group draw, Shane's got to see himself as the favourite for the group, and he's certainly got to have seen himself as favourite for this match. Getting Brian in the first round wasn't a bad draw. I don't mean that with any disrespect to Brian. He absolutely could win, and the way he started, he certainly could. Now he's 3-1 up, but perhaps Shane would have expected to have a little bit of an easier start. I think what Shane wants is just to get this back into a nice open game. He's got drawn into some safety of the type he could have done without, I think. Looks like he's going to get the frame he needed, though, as in not just the fact that he's perfect here for a, for a clearance, but also he didn't want to be, as you say, in another tactical frame. He wants this match to open up and get some finishes on the board. Yeah, I mean, it's such a good end to the season that Shane's had that win last time out in Blackpool. I mean, it wasn't just the fact that he won it, but the, the manner of the win, beating some great players. Ultimately, that incredible clearance at the end against Craig Waddingham. He's just left this one a, a touch short. He's come around to see if the eight ball goes in the same side of the table to bottom left. It is tight, but it does go. He could take it long if it doesn't, or play up and down. But it's not what he wanted. I think we see that from Shane more than pretty much any other player. He's happy to play with a lot of check side off the cushions. Unless you play with very soft hands and play the ball very slowly, the side just doesn't take. But he's, he's found a way of making that style work. Yeah, excellent eight ball as well. Just what he needed. Yeah, I mean, it was, and it was kind of out of nowhere because, as you say, he'd been quietly going about his business, but he wasn't really anywhere in the rankings compared with where he'd finished the previous year. As we see, the whole, the whole th way through this match, these breaks from Brian have had a slightly uncontrolled look about them, although yeah, generally still been spinning. fairly effective, actually. Look how much side he gets on this. I mean, that, that is as bad as you can hit a break, and he's going to get rewarded with an, a decent opportunity here. 
Yeah, I mean, we've seen a few different uh, techniques with the brake. I think he's the only one going with that standing up version of the show. Well, yellows are wide open. It's all about the eight ball. How does he want to deal with it? And this is the area of the game that he's going to need to compete with Shane. It's no surprise to see him winning the tactical frames, but he's got to be clearing off his own break. He did clear off his first break of the match, so he's laid down a gauntlet that that's on the table, but he needs to get a few more of those. And that's not ideal. He does have an option to open up the, the top pocket by playing the, the yellow off the cushion and then off the red. It's not perfectly set for that shot. Hard to control it with this much angle. Watch the cue ball as well here. Yeah, misses the cannon. Not a surprise because he's, he's not in his eye line. Yeah, it wasn't in the, the perfect place. As you say, cutting it back to a blind pocket effectively. It was one that if he caught the red too thick, it wasn't going to pot it, which is why he's had to risk sliding past it. He was actually only a whisker away. That's created a mess on the table for Shane, but you can see how he's thinking about attacking it. Getting across to the right-hand side, top cushion into the eight ball. The only thing, if he played top cushion into the eight ball, the eight ball could go safe. So he might play straight into the eight ball, but then the red could go awkward. So it's a, a cannon that needs to be precise. So it'll be a good match for Shane to win. If he does come back, it may end up being a much tougher test than he was expecting, but I guess if he does find a way of getting back into it and getting over the line, then maybe that will set him up for the tournament. Yeah, that didn't look, didn't look likely going into it that way. I think he must have been playing the cannon on the eight ball. Pace he played at, hoping that he gets the eight ball on and off the right-hand side cushion and somewhere on for the middle and leaves the red to the top corner. I don't believe he was playing the cannon on the red because that could never go well. And now he's in trouble. Yeah, he's running out of loose balls as well. So it's really that one to the middle that's going to help him now. He's got the angle on the one to the right centre now to develop the one at the top, but do you get rid of the one on the left-hand side first? It's easy enough to get back onto that angle. Yeah, really just wants the cue ball pretty much back where it is at the moment. So it's not just the cannon now. You've got to be on the ball. You're playing. Or playing into, I should say. That is not on. It's very, very tight. It's very, very close to it as well, which is hard if it is tight, but maybe slide it off the near jaw. He's tried, but not going to drop. Yeah, just couldn't quite see enough of the pocket. Trying to play a delicate shot, the previous one when he played the cannon, he could have gone into it with more pace, but then would have been trusting to let where everything finished up. Tried to control the path. And this has been the pattern of the match. Brian has kind of been allowed in for chances you wouldn't expect him to have got. And he's going to relish these kind of positions. He loves a tactical frame at the best of times, but any time your opponent's only got one ball left. Although this is a ball that is right over the pocket, so he's got to be mindful of not leaving any kind of simple one-cushion route to it if he does play a snooker at any stage. Trying to leave it as awkward as he possibly can. He must have had a look. He can't be able to get to this going past the right-hand side of that yellow. The way he's left it. He wouldn't have risked that shot if that was on. So The fact it's quite deep in the pocket as well means that... Is he thinking jaws? Hard to sneak past. It might be, you know. Yeah, if he does do that, he's going to think about where the white's going to end up. Is he top left-hand jaws. Is this going From to this side, shot? you can get it hugging that top cushion. Brilliant. 
and he's not on the eight ball. He can see it. Oh, he can, he can pot it. Hold up his hand. He knows he can pot it. What a shot from Shane Thompson. Oh, that's incredible. You call it off the jaws, but that took some playing. Potty wanted to try and do it, maybe, but you know, it, was, it was the gamble he took. Couldn't be more of a contrast of style between the two breaks. Shane goes for ultimate control with his power. Brian is a very uncontrolled type of power. But for all the control that he normally gets, the cue ball has still been kicked into the pocket. You could actually see that on the slow-mo replay there. Came straight across that front ball break. Huge amount of side on it. Still managed to square up the front ball, but got the cue ball tracking. And this was always the issue for Brian. Once it had been a long tactical frame at the beginning, there was always the likelihood that we were going to end up in this last 10 minutes of the match with the shorter shot clock, which, well, typically you'd say didn't favour him. I think we said the same before he set that record for the, the sixth red, so you never know. But if he starts missing shots like that, it's going to be a, a tough afternoon. I mean, he misses this by a long, long way. He's trying to power it through and come on and off the cushion, but got that one all wrong. Is that a sign that Brian's starting to really feel it out there? Yeah, I think the fact he was 3-1 up as well and had chances to go 4-1 up. I think Shane will be by far the happier of the two players. He will. He's got some problems, or a big problem, in this frame. Well, he's not going to get to the big problem. The eight ball is going to be the, the issue. Less of an issue for Brian because you can pot that yellow and that in turn opens up the eight ball. Yeah, and he's, well, I was going to say, has he landed on it now? He's not playing it now. You can see from that camera angle, though, plenty of room to pot it from low. This is a glorious chance to go 4 3. I mean, Brian has had enough opportunities already in this match to have won it. It's very rare that Shane gives away this many chances in open play. This is going to make for an entertaining end to the match. Only eight minutes to go and the score is still three all, so plenty more pool to be played. Yeah, I think whatever happens from here it will be. But that wasn't the best of shots that Brian's ever played. It looked like the plant was makeable, but decided to play into it, but didn't play into it very well. And that's, that's not too bad. He's on the one on the rail. Just got to drop it in. You know, the yellow's waiting. Yeah, it's all on this shot. Used it all, but in it goes. Because he left that one till last, it meant he was going to be playing for the eight ball long. But it's still absolutely fine. Well, this match has not played the way you would have expected so far. Brian Halkrow opens up a 4-3 lead. And so, the same standing up break that we've seen all the way through the match. Forces the cue through. Um, hits it better than the previous, but still not great. And this time he doesn't make a ball, but the split's good. The split's very, very good. This is where Shane needs to show his class. A couple of weeks ago in Blackpool, these were the kind of opportunities that Shane was clearing up pretty much blindfolded. The thing I'm sort of looking at here with the, the clearance is playing the plant on the right hand side. Easy for that red just to spin across to the left hand side and it could become a problem. Almost want to have rid of the one over the pocket rather than play the plant and play the one that's on the right hand side on the cushion as its own shot. I don't think he's going to do that. It just means the shot in a shot's time is going to be very delicate. See Callum Singleton in the crowd there. He's just lost the Group A final to a very good performance from Sean Storey. 
Yeah, so all about where the second ball goes. Yeah, and he left himself loads of angle on purpose to make sure the, the cue ball outraced the red. So this way of being under time pressure isn't great. If he'd have had plenty of time to set himself up for the shot, he'd never have missed that. But having to set the slider up in 15 seconds, he had to rush a bit. Wow, yet another chance for Brian. They just keep coming right now. It's just errors we're not used to seeing from Shane Thompson. Almost a slight, you know, the, the frustration of the match is building, a lack of composure out there. And yeah, that was, it was awkward. He was using a spider and it was under 15 seconds a shot, but if he makes a potting angle, the natural path of the cue ball wouldn't have been too bad. It looked like it was going to slide up on the short position. And now, four minutes 44, this is Brian Halcrow's frame to lose. If Brian does manage to get it on the board, then 5-3, it would be, well, long odds for Shane to come back from there. This could be our first major shock of this year's Pro Cup. Shane turned up to the last Pro Series event with a new queue, which I think he was feeling pretty pleased with that weekend. If he carries on like this, that, the queue isn't going to be lasting into the new year. Well, Brian's not going here, and okay, I can. you can look at it, lay out of the table and go, these are all there, why aren't you going? The reason is he's, he's, he's worrying about the clock. He's trying to let the clock run down. Now, the gamble is Shane making this out of a snooker, whereas when they are all there, two, two frames ahead, it's got to be worth it. But yeah, I think if he's already got the two frames on the board, you'd agree with that, but I'm with you there. You can't afford to let your opponent back to the table at this level. Especially as there's a risk that what is a perfect position turns into a less perfect one for Bryant. This is the kind of position where Shane's happy to either fluke the red or just mess the yellows up a bit more. Yeah, I mean, Shane wants Brian not to go for it. So you, as well, that's the other thing. And brilliant from Shane Thompson. And you have to question Brian Halcrow's shot choices. You really do. Yeah, for me, that's a mistake. It was okay to play the first safety shot to get ball in hand, but then... Once he'd got that, this was a real mistake. Oh, and he's missed the eight ball. Oh, this is incredible what we've seen from Shane Thompson today. I mean, it wasn't a formality, that shot, but the Shane Thompson that we saw a couple of weeks ago was never missing that. Yeah, and you've been let off the hook massively here, Brian. Now it's time to hold your nerve and get yourself two in front. And get yourself in the second round. No more safety to be played. Yeah, I mean, this is an epic let-off. I mean, both ways round. Both players have been trying to throw this frame away. I mean, surely from here, normally you'd say this is an absolute formality, but the way this match has gone, you're hesitant to award this frame to anyone until that eight ball disappears from the table. That miss from Shane is, is hard to... Hard to get your head around. I mean, for everything that's gone in the match so far, I can understand the frustration, but that eight ball goes in with 4-4 with, four, four, with three minutes left on the clock. He, you know, he'd snap your hand off for that. Yeah, and what's Brian thinking at that point? Because he's thrown that frame away, whereas now suddenly he's two frames up. He's feeling confident. He's very experienced with the match clock. You know full well he's going to be trying to run that down if he gets the chance to. Yeah, and quite right doing it now now that you, you're still making the clearance but you you know this is 30 seconds instead of doing it in 10 seconds oh this is going to be killing shane as he sits there while brian chalks his cue for 10 seconds waiting to play this shot wow what a frame and what a match we've seen so far yeah going for the cut breaks got the eight ball moving well, he needs an ultra quick finish now to at least put some drama on the Brian Halcrow break, but it's very rare you see a golden duck, let alone when you need one, and your opponent won't even be hitting the break hard, and we're not going to get that far. Oh, this has been a calamity for Shane Thompson. He, you can tell he just wants out of there now. Both players now know the game is up. Um, what a performance, really, you have to say. I mean, there's been some moments along the way for Brian that you kind of, you know, it's almost like he was he didn't want to win it. But for him to take down 
Shane Thompson, the number five seed, the former number one in the opening round here. Very impressive. Yeah, you can just relax here. Just pot a few balls. There's not enough time left. Doesn't matter whether he pots them or not, although obviously he'd like to stay at the table. Hasn't even called his extension yet. That shows how confident he is that this match is over. So this ball down the rail, doesn't matter whether it goes in or not, it doesn't go in, but Shane Thompson comes over, he can't get out of the arena quick enough. Brian Halcrow, meanwhile, smiles as he goes back to his corner, exchanges handshakes with his supporters. What an unusual match of pool. All right, everyone, welcome back to the Ultimate Pool Studio, joined by Sean Story to discuss that one as Brian Buzzer Halcrow gets through Shane Thompson, booked his spot in the group final. Brian, you must be buzzing with that result. That's uh, that's some performance from you. Yeah, it's a tough match for Shane, you know, he, he, what you get with him, he doesn't miss, he's got a cue ball on a string. Uh, today he missed a couple. I nearly let him back in with some of me play, but you have to play that way. You know, when the clock's like that and you've got a little bit of a lead, it's just he kept nailing them out with snookers. Twice, two really good snookers I put them in. And I know these guys at this level, you kind of keep giving them chances, but they were tough snookers. You know what I mean? And it, I was never snookering them again after, <laughs> after the second one went in there. I was really interested actually, Sean. I know you were watching that game as to, as to what you were thinking of how the match flowed because that was, re that, was a, that was a thinking pool players match. That there was a lot of big decisions to be made. Brian chose to go one way quite a lot, chose a safer option, played the percentages, which I know you like to do as well. What did you make of the, of the match as a whole? That was a really good, good um, solid performance from Brian, I thought. Shane, Shane wasn't quite to his normal level he'd like to be at, but you know, I think that's because Brian put him under a bit of pressure early doors. Shane made a couple of mistakes and Brian capitalised and he didn't really do a lot wrong. He, he had a little miscue there. I don't know what happened there and it still went in, so <laughs> testament to how straight you're queuing. <laughs> Yeah, it's well, a good way to get backspin, bit of air time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at least you don't have to worry too much about that now. Hey, Brian, it was it was a fantastic result for you. I know um, you've been you had the match against Chris Day in the in the qualifiers for the Champions League recently, but obviously off, off the back of the 2022 season, have you have you tried to change anything heading into 2023? Um, I've had a lot going on off the table, and it's really affected us. And I have to tell this story here. I've got my best friend's lucky shoes on. He passed away a year ago. He was my best friend. And then he gave us a pair of shoes before he died. And they're size seven. And I never tried them because I'm an eight. And I just tried them on. So I'd like to dedicate that win to my good friend, Lee Toppin, who passed away a year ago. Awesome stuff, Brian. Lo love to hear it. And well, I don't be taking those off anytime no, soon. He's, <laughs> on, he's on me Jimmy Grimbles now. <laughs> They're not going anywhere, I'll wear these till they're off my feet. <laughs> uh, you say the word Jimmy Grimble is all I wanted from today, Brian, I'll be honest with you. But it was it was a super performance as well, Sean, because it was it was an exhibition really and this game at the top level doesn't always have to be break, finish, break, finish. There are different styles and ways to play this game and Brian exhibited a way there which is really, really effective. Some of the safety play was outstanding. Yeah, it's like he said, when you know his decision to, to let Shane to keep snookering Shane towards the end of the match when there are three minutes left, I, I agree with, you know, because if you don't, you're only on 15 seconds a shot. If you don't see a clear pattern to get out and you can waste some time, you know, every time you play safe, you're kind of knocking 30 seconds off the clock. If you do win the frame, it gives Shane not a lot of chance to come back. Obviously, in the end, Shane did pot it off two cushions. Um, but, you know, it's a great shot to do that. But it's not going to happen very often. So Brian's just playing the percentages there. And, you know, biding his time, most of the time that will work out. But it is a little gamble, isn't it? But likewise, you can go for the finish and not get it. And, and then you give the frame away. So I think he did the right thing, given the situation of the match, given what had happened. Um, he played some, some really good tactics and, you know, he kept his head on. He never never looked out of, out of you know, control of the game. He was always you know, thinking ahead and yeah, as I say, I think he held himself together really well. Yeah, I know from from watching you play a lot, a lot over the last couple of years, Brian, that you, you, you said to me yourself, you're a big confidence player, but I imagine a win like that out in the arena today was just what you need to get yourself into the tournament. I think last week against Chris, done us a world of good, because Chris is in so good, confident, momentum, world finalist, doubles finalist the next day, he's really on a high, and like, I was 4-0 down in that game and I won 10-2. So to take a result like that against somebody who's in that form, it built us up, you know what I mean? And like today, I've come in, I would say the first time in three years with a bit of confidence. I've had no momentum, no confidence, and I'm playing against world-class players. 
and it's really hard when you're getting battered and battered and battered. But I know it'll do. All the players know what I'm capable of. It's just I haven't been producing it, and it was really nice to show the viewers and myself and that I can do it on a big stage. And that's what I'll go do it again later on. Yeah, absolutely. You'll face the winner of Dylan Leary and Ronan McCarthy. It's turned into a seniors club, this uh, this final group, isn't it? Group the oldies. Yeah, absolutely. Still kicking at this age, Brian. It's brilliant to watch, and we wish you all the very best of luck against Thank Dylan or Ronan, much. which is our next match up on the slate here in the Ultimate Pool Pro Cup.